Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for May 13th, 14th, and 15th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, this is just the introduction. It will be on all the videos. I will put the timestamp where you can go to just go directly to your videos. Hope you watch the introduction at least one time. Um, the thing, it's a very interesting weekend. We have Friday the 13th. Now that's to some people very unlucky. I look at it as very changing energy. Very, you know, 13 according to the cards, um, you know, death card. Something ends, something begins. Having it on a Friday has been associated either with great um, misfortune or to me, I think it's really very clearing and that better things are happening. Anyway, for the weekend, let's get back to the weekend. For the weekend, I am going to use my Radley Valentine Angel deck. I will use my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle deck. I will then also use my Emily Anderson Crystal deck. I now, for this overview, for this introduction, I will use my Wade Weight Rider Traditional Tarot and my, yes, I still don't remember her name, Colette Baron Reed, The Good Tarot. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest, okay? I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. My job is just to deliver the message. Try not to get too much in the way. Now, a couple of things. Yes, I need my notes here. So on the um, 15th, 15th energy, it's, it's not a bad energy. Um, we do have Taurus, which is sextiling Neptune. And what that's kind of like is that's kind of like uh, sextiling is kind of like two buddies getting together, maybe watching a movie in the home, you know, having having some snacks, doing whatever it is, chit chatting, not really, not really a lot of energy, but yet not not discomforting energy. But then, oops, let's push that back. Then on that same day, we have Taurus again. We are in Taurus season squaring with Saturn. Saturn is in Aquarius. It's been there. It will be there for another, uh, what is it now, uh, maybe another 10 months. This is the energy that, um, you know, I've been calling this, uh, you know, reality versus illusions. You know, this is where you're seeing what is true, what is not true. What part of our lives do we really need to get rid of that was not real? Was not really what we thought it was. But squaring is kind of an opposition type of energy. It's kind of a pressurized. It's kind of saying, you know, it, it's where people, even if they're buddies, even if they're friends, they get a little bit um, at, you know, lock horns with each other. Now, the interesting thing, we are in Taurus. Taurus is about home. It's about family, very grounded earth energy. Saturn, again, Saturn has, you know, that, you know, very, you know, just a lot of um, intrigue and it's in the air energy. So there could be some news, thoughts, things like that affecting home. Now, the interesting day is, of course, going to be the 15th and the 16th. The 16th at 13 minutes after midnight, Eastern Standard Time, the moon will be, it will be a full moon in Scorpio. Now, it's at 25 degrees, and all of the rest will be at 25 that I'm going to tell you about, too. So I'm not quite sure. Two has, you know, two has decisions um, coming together. Crossroads, five, change, change, change. They do add up to seven, which is a divine number. Anyway, this full moon, it's going to be a solar eclipse. I'm sorry, a lunar eclipse. And it is actually a blood moon. So it's supposed to be a total, if I'm, if I'm correct, it's a total lunar eclipse. And it's supposed to be about, I think, an hour and maybe 40 minutes long. So I'm looking at a lot of the northern hemisphere and some of the southern hemisphere, the northern part of the southern, might be able to see this. You can check it out on, your, um, and, you know, on the internet to see if your area can do this. Okay, so we have this full moon. We have this lunar eclipse. The full moon is in Scorpio. Scorpio, you know, the, really the three um, symbols for Scorpio is the scorpion, you know, can sting is the eagle, looks at things from a higher view, but it's also the um, phoenix rising from the ashes. And so here we have that 13, that, you know, Friday the 13th energy, some, you know, things coming down, things, you know, collapsing, and then this rising from the ashes. Now, the thing about this full moon, it will be, again, this will be trining 
Mars, and also Neptune, both in Pisces. Pisces has a warm spiritual um, looking really deep into energy, you know, into what's going on in the world type of energy in the, in, you know, just, you know, secret, secretive energy. But trining is like, just as I said, sextiling is having a nice night or a nice evening in with your buddies. Trining is actually a little bit more bolder, is actually has a little more action to it, has more activity to it. So this would be like Scorpio, Mars and Neptune all getting out and, you know, all saying, let's have a night out on the town. Let's make some changes. Let's make some things happen. Still very um, joining type of energy. But then the full moon is also squaring Saturn again. Saturn, now the night, day before, night before, squaring Taurus. This is now squaring um, Scorpio, Saturn, and that's still in Aquarius. So with that... With that, this is kind of like, you know, again, Scorpio does not like secrets. They like to keep their own secrets, but they don't like anyone else to have secrets. And I've told you with Saturn in Aquarius um, what that's going to happen. So this is kind of like they're getting together. And now, granted, Scorpio does have Mars, which is that, you know, which is that um, God of War type of energy, you know, backing him up. Neptune, secret, secret, secret energy backing him up, or her up, so, but Scorpio is kind of like, oh yeah, oh yeah, well, I, you know, fine, then I am telling this big secret, and then Saturn's like, oh yeah, well then I'm going to tell your secrets, so this is, could be a very, again, cleansing type of energy, very powerful type of energy, very secrets out, you know, you know, things that we may not even want to know about type of energy, and remember, Mercury is in Gemini, and, you know, and it's it retro right now, and it's always a time when I'm like, you know, universe wants to put things right as much as it can. So interesting full moon. You should be able to see it if you're in that northern part, um, you know, of the hemisphere, and even some of the northern, like New Zealand part of the southern hemisphere too. So interesting stuff, dark, dark energies. And then the interest, the other interesting things, at least I find it interesting, is that the next lunar eclipse will be November 8th. So that will be Taurus in Scorpio. So it's the mirror. So are we, you know, a lot of portals. People are talking about portals. People are talking about the sunspots, the ascension energy, just change, change, change type of energy. But... I do think that this is the more we the more we see the the, see, the clearer we see, the clearer the, you know the more we can um, work through. Okay, we all get this through. We all get through this together. That's really what all of this is about. We are you know light workers that have joined together for this time. That's why you're in this channel. Why you are following. Why we're all working together to spread the light. Okay, let's see. Now, let's see what higher power has to say. Hi, oh, and card, oh, card already coming out. Ooh, two cards. The Fool and the Lovers. Interesting with these. These are both major arcana cards. We'll talk about them in a moment. These are universal energies. And there we go. Two more cards. Not quite sure. I think we'll go this way. So we have four cards that have popped out. So now we have the fool. The fool begins his journey. The fool, you know, this is the new beginning, new start. We have a zero energy. Remember, numbers have meanings, okay? Zero is God source energy, the universal beyond, you know, beyond the universe type of energy. The fool, again, starts his journey, doesn't really know what he's doing, what she's doing, just knows that she has to go. He has to do this, okay? This has to be. And it's a spiritual awakening also. It's a spiritual quest. And then, like I said, the fool starts the journey. Now, the major arcana is actually the fool's journey. So now we, go, we jump to, so, and you can take a look. Let's take a look. The fool looking up to the, you know, to the sky. The sun is shining, has this beautiful white rose. All he needs, he doesn't have to have much of anything. He's got all, he, she has everything he needs. You know, it looks like, you know, it looks like the, um, there's an et ledge there that he, we don't know. Is he going to fall down on it? Is he jumping off on it? Not really paying attention? Or is there a safety net? We don't really know. 
but the fool just says, I'm doing this because I have to. This is my, my, you know, my heart, my gut, my spirit, my connection is saying I need to do this. Okay, we go to the six. Six is the number of man. It's the energy we put into something. This is the lovers. The lovers is about relationships. Now, relationships can be, it can be very, very complicated, can be very, very messy, but they can be very joyful and they can be very happy or they can be very sad. It's interesting with this, we have a heavenly being, angelic being. We have two people down here. And this is really, this is, the man is looking at the woman. The woman is looking up, not looking necessarily at the man. We have a lot of um, Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden type of energy around. You know, we've got the snake, a fruit tree. We've got the fires in the fire tree. So this, you know, this could be an either a very wonderful blessing on relationships or this could be one of those weekends where relationships, and again, remember, universal energies, where relationships are really revealed. Considering what we're doing, you know, so if, you know, I would say revealed because this could be, you know, um, it, again, secrets between the relationships. And who is the relationship with? It could be the relationship with our universe. Let's see what we have here. Next card. Okay, now we have the emperor. So again, this is a major arcana card. We have a four. Four has a stability energy to it. Organization leadership. This is the emperor. A lot of times this is, um, you know, to me, I, have, I feel like this is the um, more of the male energy of the divine. You know, of course, the empress being the female energy of the divine. Uh, this has a very strict energy. This is a very ruling energy. This is a very, um, not quite the hierophant energy. And you know, Ugh, to Hierophant. Not everybody agrees with me on that. But the emperor is the one wants to make, wants to really do what is right, um, has the ultimate um, authority over this universal energy here, along with the empress. So we've got something that's just interesting right at this point. Um, you know, let me know what you're thinking. But again, this is a spiritual journey. This is a new journey. This is a new way of looking at things. Relationships, messy, messy, messy. Could be very, you know, like I said, the secrets could come out. There is some somebody, someone, an energy that wants to create some stability and leadership. Um, could We could be, you know, whatever this energy could be very answerable to the emperor also. Next card. So we have three major arcanas. Let's see. Now, this is reversed. To me, reversed cards have very, very strong energies. Now, this is a 10. So we have a 0, 6, 4, 10. 10 crossroads. Yeah, I'm not crossroads. I'm sorry. 10 transitions. Okay, I was kind of looking at the X right there. Um, you know, transitional energy. One new beginning, zero God's source energy. So there is a lot of... Um, I would say a lot of divine type of energy here. Now the 10, you can look at the 10. There's all these 10 swords. Swords, air energy. Aquarius, Saturn is an Aquarius. Gemini, Mercury is reversed, you know, or is, you know, uh, is reversed in Gemini. And then this Libra also. So we are, you know, so we did have the Libra full moon. It does still have power or energy but we are going into that Scorpio full moon also. So, you know, like uh, Mercury's retrograde. Whatever this is, this dude is gone. This dude is done. This dude is dead. Now, is this dead to ourselves? Is this dead to our ideas? Is this dead to, um, you know, any, you know, this was overkill. This is like, no, you are not happening. Now, I do always believe that the Ten of Swords, again, that's your thought processes, planning, um, hearing news, uh, again, it's really your, your mindset and where you're going. Um, a lot of times, to me, the Ten of Swords is about things ending. And, you know, bad situations ending. Just nasty energies ending. This is done. You know, now who did this? I would say that the universe or, because this is, like I said, there's some overkill with this. Okay. So let's see what we're going to, let's see what happens more so with this. Again, the fool, spiritual journey, new journey, new, you know, kind of like, yes, this is what I need to do. Yes, this is where I have to go. Relationships can be extremely messy, messy, messy. 
It could be a beginning of a relationship, but it could be a lot of, just with the moon and stuff, I'd say a lot of secrets coming out about relationships, things that we hold dear may be, like I said, may be revealed. Um, divine masculine energy rules, laws in some ways, but more divine laws than actually physical laws, and something end. Something is over. Okay. Whoa, we got something there, didn't we? Let me see. There, that's better. I keep knocking my camera. Okay, so we've got some interesting stuff. So higher power, what can we say with the good tarot? Colette Baron Reed. Here we go. Colette Baron Reed. Higher power, what do you need to, what do, what does everybody need to know for this weekend? What do we need to know? Okay, let's cut. Okay. Okay, and two cards want to come out. Let's see here. So we have the six. Again, this is the lover card. This is the love, the, you know, this is the lovers, love energy here. So this, you know, this could even be, like I said, this could be validation for this and what we were talking about. This could be divine love helping us through this also. That's another thing we have to do because the, on this card we have the young woman. Um, she is not afraid. She is very comforted. She is lying on the beast. So we have the humanity and we have the beast. You know, so beauty and the beast type of energy here. But there is love. And this could definitely be that whatever we are experiencing this weekend, it will be done with love. And I like that one. I like that energy. Now let's see what this one is. The Page of Air. So the Page of Air follows the uh, Ten of Swords. This is the Page of Swords, Page of Airs. Now, page court cards have two energies. Page's underlying energy is Earth. The um, Knight's underlying energy is Fire. Queen, Water, King, Air. So this is Earth energy, underlying energy. So this is about, you know, Earth is your Taurus we're in. It is your Virgo. It is your Capricorn. We're not even going to talk about Pluto and Capricorn right now. Um, but it is, you know, solid, tangible energy. Money, job, career, your life, your, your work, your home, okay? Again, we have that air energy. Again, it is that sad, uh, blah, blah, blah. it is that Aquarius, that Gemini, and Libra energy. So this is, this is, pages are very enthusiastic. They want to get started. So whatever this is, we're having a lot of divine energy over us. There is this divine protection as we go on our fool's journey, as we kind of are like, I'm not even sure why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. These two are very validating with each other. So there is love, love overneath, over us. And then we have our emperor, who I think is actually bringing a little bit of stability to us. Something ends. Sucker. <laughs> and then we come to the page of air. Pages, again, very enthusiastic. We'll get out there. We'll do things. Sometimes the air energy overthinks the, it thinks things a little bit too much, but, um, you know, kind of sees the things that are trying to hold back, but still finds it an exciting time, still finds that it's, an, uh, it's, it's worth the challenge. Okay, so I kind of have a lot of Beauty and the Beast energy here, spiritual. Well, anyway, you know what I've said about these. Something, though, even though this is Minor Arcana and this is Minor Arcana, this something has to end for something, for a new challenge, a new beginning, new start also. Because the page wants to jump right in and get started. The page is also the messenger. So the messenger with air could be something that we hear. There could be a message. Okay. Oh, so much, so much. Oh, this is this is just so much going on. I have been trying to post on my community page what I post on Facebook and Instagram, so I hope you've been enjoying that. Community page doesn't always let me do the right, um, you know, aspects, so I try to cut those in half for you, too. So I hope you're enjoying them. Um, I think they explain a lot of what's going on. Anyway, do me a favor. Go over here to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications, 
keeps me going, keeps me going strong. So thank you very much. And starting, well, your videos will be starting now. Hello, my Virgos. And how are you doing? Good weekend. We're feeling a lot of the energies, but let's see. Higher power. What do you want to say to my Virgos? Yeah, I've been getting that one. Basically, as I was shuffling beforehand, and then I'm kind of like, okay, well, let's see. It is well. It is well. So I don't know. Is that your path, that you're doing good on your path, or just things are okay around you? I don't know. It is well. Um, you know, I kind of get this. Don't worry. And I did get kind of a chill vibe for Taurus, but yours is different. Yours is a little different on this. It is well. It is well. I kind of feel like there's a confirmation of, like, well, it is well. Okay, let's see what we've got. Higher power. What do, the, what do you want to say through the cards? Ah! Ooh, look at things a little differently. Okay, interesting with that. So we have Archangel Gabriel, the messenger. So somebody could be, you could be getting a message of something that's, um, well, let's, let's do this first, and then we'll get into that. This is reverse, so this has a lot of, uh, this has more, not more importance, but this is just kind of like, hey, please pay attention to me energy here. So we have Archangel Gabriel. We have Awakening. Awakening is opening your eyes to something, is seeing things the way it you know, needs to be seen. We have a 12, we have the one energy, new beginnings, 10 transition. We have a two, crossroads, choices, coming together, partnerships. Add them together, it's a three. There's a lot of power in three, just doing something, saying something three times. It's also celebration, it's also creativity. This is also the hanged man in traditional tarot. So there is a lot of submission with this energy, and I don't mean, um, I don't mean that you just have to allow things, I'm not saying, that you just, you know, just give up your dreams, nothing. But there is a sense of, again, I'm going the way I need to go, okay? Because, you know, there's not, there's not, a, kind, there's not a lot of um, stress in this energy, in this card here. There's not, there's just a sense of, I'm just more, I'm more aware. I, I am where I am supposed to be. I am doing what I am supposed to be doing. Awakening also is, you know, there is also a kind of look at things a little bit differently. So if you're feeling a lot of the energies and feeling very stressed, know that you are and you are doing what you are supposed to be doing at this time for this moment, okay? Look at things from a different perspective, a temporary standstill. It's important to be yourself. Next card is the Ace of Earth. Now, I will tell you that did pop up in Taurus, but I do shuffle in between here. Ace, one, new beginnings, new start, earth, your energy, Capricorn and Taurus, money, job, career. It's also very tangible energy. It's very, you know, energy that you, you know, you just can hold on to. It can be starting a new career also. It could be new money coming in because the Ace of Earth is about new money, is about abundance, is about things changing on that financial scene, okay? So the inflow, and maybe that's where you have to kind of go. You, there's this connection. There is this sense of, okay, I need to, you know, just, again, awaken. I need to see things for the reality of them. I need to, there is, a, like I said, there's a submission, but it's not submitting to the physical. It's submitting to the um, metaphysical supernatural, okay? The ace of earth, the inflow of abundance, a promising business venture, important documents or contracts. Now, remember, Mercury is retrograde, so if you are signing papers, well, you should do this anyway. Have somebody look them all over. I'm not, I don't do that, okay? Okay, next card, balance. Balance energy here. Okay, there's a lot of... Um, Libra energy with this. There's a lot, you know, the balancing of the scales. Again, we have the one and the ten, but then we have the four. And the four does have stability. You know, we think about the the intro, the emperor. Stability organization also has leadership. It's that, it's that, you know, coming to terms. So there's a lot of things are happening for you where you have to kind of, 
you know, kind of just say, okay, I've been maybe I've been resisting this path a little bit. Now I just have to come to terms with it. I have to submit to that higher power type of energy. The you know, um, yeah, I could say the universal, but I kind of like narrowing it down because the universe is so big. You don't know who's going to pick up your energy with that. You know, so you know, try to anchor yourself with something that's positive for you. But the balance is those scales balancing out, is that, you know, is kind of coming, there's a lot of coming to terms this weekend for you. But with that coming to terms, when it, it's like sometimes people were asking me about this, sometimes um, like the fool card, you take that leap of faith and then afterwards is when you find out why you did it. Okay, so the balance is, is kind of that way too. The awakening is kind of that way too. You just have to take a breath and say, fine, fine, <laughs> and then things start to actually answer. Then you start to get answers to why you've been kind of pushed into that. Anyway, here we go. The need for balance and moderation, cooperation and compromise. Wait for perfect timing. This is Archangel Zedkiel, Violet Light. Let's see now with the... John Holland, Psychic Tarot, Higher Power. What do you want to tell us through these cards? It is well. Okay, we got the it is well. And I think that's the whole thing. So then, if, if should you be really affected with the uh, moon energies and you're just kind of like pacing and just not, just remember, it is well. It is well. You know, you're where you're supposed to be. Okay. And have a really good moon energy ceremony. I think that would be really good for you, my Virgos. You know, that's release, relinquish, request. I didn't talk about that, but it would be very good for you to do that. Anyway, let's go on. I never say to worship the moon. That's not what. That's not my thing. I just look at the moon, divine creation, and you know, send out my um, intentions to higher power. Anyway, let's see what we've got here. The waiting game. So we have that two energy again. We have, again, this is the waiting game. So it is, you know, just kind of, so it's like the anxiety, all of this, you know, all of the moon energy is kind of, you know, pulling you, pushing you. And your cards are just basically saying it is well, it, you know, wait it out, you know, look, you know, balance. All of this is just for you to re kind of get that really strong um, grounding energy, you know, get out there with the full moon, really release and relinquish the waiting game. Things are happening. You may not, you may not, they may not be happening as fast as you want, but whatever is happening, it does bring you new money. It does bring you a job. So you may not have heard about the job offer on, you know, Thursday or Friday, but that's kind of telling you that the decisions are being made. So you could hear about this on the next week. Okay. Have a good weekend. Just chill out a little bit. Well, that's more Taurus. And um, just wait it out a little bit more. Okay? You can look at this. The, you know, time, you know, the um, the hourglass, uh, the roots are growing. They're getting deeper and deeper. The journey continues. So the two energy, again, crossroads, but it could also be partnershipping. So let me know what this is. You've got a lot that I can see a very, th I can see the, the ribbon flowing through them all, but let me know what this means to you, my Virgos. Comment below, okay? And let me know because it's all interesting. Two arcane, two major arcana energies. Very strong. Okay. Oops, wrong one. I might have pulled some more out. Okay, so what energy or crystal would be good for my Virgos? Let's take this one, do this. Sometimes they need a good clearing out. Here we are. Fire. Fire. Now, if you are doing a moon energy, and you can do it like three, you know, three, two, one days before, and you can do it, you know, after two, but um, a lot of times people will write what they want, what they're giving, all the stuff, the release, relinquishing, and requesting. I tell you to make a copy so you can put it on your refrigerator and they take it and then they, they burn it and they send it up to the universe. So that could be your fire. But fire in itself is passionate, creation, travel, but also courage. So candles, incense, 
that could be very helpful for you for this weekend also. Okay, my Virgos, let me know. Yours is very out there. Anyway, my Virgos, let me know. Please like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. As always, my Virgos, know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.